lover of our souls. Will you move in this place, God, that we will know after this service, after this day that we have absolutely had an encounter with you, will you not let us be a distraction to what it is you're doing? Be my mouthpiece that I will speak words of truth, light, and life. Be our ears that we will hear only what it is that you would have us to hear on this day, that you and you alone will be glorified. Move, God. Speak, God. We ask this for Christ's sake. Amen. You may be seated. Millennia, thousands of years ago, those who knew God, knew his word, and believed his promises, waited. They waited for the promised Messiah, and Christ came. Their generation was the first to witness his appearance after they had waited. And today, we join in the praise and worship of our Savior as we too learn to value the blessedness of what it means to wait. Our scripture readings for today will lead us in an examination and a discovery of some ways that we have been called to wait. In our Exodus 12 passage, we witness what I believe to be one of the most difficult ways that we are called to wait. In the text, God is instituting the Passover feast, and Moses has called for the selection and the butchering of the Passover lamb. He tells the elders to take a hyssop branch, dip it in the basin of blood that's been drained from the animal, mark the header and the doorpost around the door, Go inside and wait. Wait. In verse 22, after he'd given the people the instructions, Moses said, none of you should go out of the door of his house until the morning. Effectively, this is what Moses is telling the people. There is nothing else for you to do but wait. God will deal with the Egyptians God will make his way to your dwelling. God will be your protector. All you can do in this situation is wait on God. We struggle with this kind of waiting. Why? Because if you're like me, we tend to think most of the times there is something I can be doing. There's something I can can do in this situation. Yes, there are times when we can and we must engage, intervene, participate in a resolution. But there are times in our lives, children, spouse, friend, mental, emotional, spiritual crises, medical diagnosis, personal tragedy, societal catastrophe, church hurt, you name it. There are times in our lives when chaos conquers our calm and there is nothing, nothing, nothing we can do but wait on God. You look out over the horizon of your life and if that mountain is going to move, God's going to do it. I think about Joseph, the season we just exit, the readings that we are familiar with. Joseph was told, I want you to take Mary and the baby Jesus, and I want you to flee to Egypt. I want you to just 
pick up, run, and hide, and wait. Now, I can imagine probably going through Joseph's mind is, I just watched and experienced some phenomenal, supernatural encounters, God, that unfolded as you brought the Christ child into the world. Come on, why can't you give me some superpowers? Do some of the stuff you did, the magical, majestical, unbelievable things that you did bringing Christ into the world. If you give me the powers, I can help. God would say to him, like he says to us in those seasons, when we want to get involved, I have something for you to do, Joseph. Take the child, run and hide, and wait. I'll take care of your enemy. I'll grieve, I'll deal with and comfort the grieving mothers. Your assignment in this season is to simply and only wait. And then we come to Psalm 40, and the writer tells us in the very first verse the manner in which he waited on the Lord's deliverance. Verse 1 read, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Patience, patience. Patience, I am challenged with this way of waiting. How often do I, when God's timing is not in step with my watch, how often do I look out over the horizon of my life and pout and fold my arms in doubt of his appearing? God, I'm waiting. Where are you, God? I'm waiting. I would say to you, maybe encourage you in this new season, as we enter into this new year, many of us have resolved to see some things differently, to do some things differently. In fact, some of us have resolved to even be different. And yes, we will trust God to be the catalyst for the change that we desire. But will we wait? patiently on him, on his will, his timing, his way. And we come to the last two passages, and as I was reading them, I saw this tension in their teachings concerning some interesting ways in which we are called to wait. The Corinthian church was in the spotlight in its day. It was a popular, growing church. These saints as Paul referred to them, were not missing any spiritual gifts. In verse 7, the apostle said, you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every gift available to the church, they had it. But with all those gifts and all that good potential to do great things, they fussed and fought while they waited. And then we have John chapter 1. And we are introduced to John the Baptist. Funny clothes, odd diet, a cursory glance in his life and ministry wasn't that impressive as he waited for Jesus' appearing. Now the truth is, John the Baptist could have been a spectacular attraction in his day. He could have lined up book deals and had plays written and performed about his life. Can you imagine it? Red carpet. John the Baptist, what was it like being filled with supernatural powers in the womb? Hey, John, uh, we hear that your mom was barren, never supposed to have children, but then some angel pronounced your birth, and here you are. John the Baptist, is it true that you are the precursor to the, the curse killer? John the Baptist, give us an interview. John the Baptist, let us write about you, John the Baptist. But no, having no prominence, no flashy ministry, 
being more comfortable in the woods than in the world, John the Baptist said, I was told to preach, baptize, and tell folks to repent. And the one who appointed me to the seemingly nondescript calling told me, John, keep plugging away and wait for him to reveal to me the Savior of the world. John, keep plugging away, and eventually I will show you who is and who will be the Savior of the world. John would say to us, I was told to dip him down, pull him up, and tell him to repent because the kingdom of God was at hand. Nothing fancy, nothing attention grabbing, just dip him down, pull him up, and tell him to repent. And then one day, while I was doing what I was called to do, dipping them down, pulling them up, and telling them to repent, it happened. I didn't know who Jesus was. I had no idea that salvation would be found in him. The only thing I knew for sure was my purpose, my calling, my assignment in this world. What was it, John? Dip him down. Pull him back up and tell him to repent. The Corinthian passage teaches us, if you seemingly have it all, guard against pride and self-centeredness as you wait for his appearing. Redeem the time by advancing his kingdom and not upsetting it. And then the John 1 reading asks all of us, have you been called to be a watchman on the wall? Have you been appointed to serve? Has God called you to a task, a ministry, a purpose? But the night has gone on far too long. And you're getting, like I can get, distracted, bored, restless, discouraged, because sometimes our duties can seem dull. You and I, in some seasons, we want the flashing lights and the dancing elephants. We want things that'll tickle their ears. We want things that'll get people talking. And we want some attention focused on us. But God is saying, I will move in the monotony if you wait on me. If I have called you to a task, placed you in a position, do not abandon it for the fickleness of this world. Like Saul, if you have been given a seven-day promise from Samuel, wait the week and don't abandon your post one second sooner. Let's pray. God, will you give us wisdom to see the myriad ways that you have called for us to wait on you? And will you pour out extra discernment for us that we might know how it is you have called for us to respond in each of the seasons of our lives? And as we witness the seasons change, as we witness the ways in which we wait change, might we be reminded even now, even now, even now, God, one thing does not change, and that's you, you are constant. And as we wait on you, you will always, always, always answer, never disappoint. Do that for us. Teach us to wait on you. We'll love you and we'll brag about you to the ends of the earth. We ask this for Christ's sake. Amen.